I can't even tell you how disappointed I am in you, Birgit. This is the worst job I've seen in my entire career. But... Don't talk back. You are bad. I will probably have to strip you of all your awards, prizes, and Girl Scout badges. You no longer deserve any of them. But I only did what? Hogwash. Do you really wish to contradict me? I can't believe how low you've sunk, Birgit. A guinea pig? It's unbelievable! Your work is an insult to the entire convent. Get rid of it! I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to. Your whining won't make up for your failures. Just in case you decide not to waste my time with your ineptitude anymore. Here is a motif that's worth immortalizing on a banner. The puma. Strong, precise, dignified. A symbol of self-c-c-control. Lily would have liked to comfort Bergen. But on the other hand, it really was her own fault. Lily hoped for Birgit's sake that she would try a little harder with the puma motif. It served Birgit right. Incompetence had to be punished. The animal motifs were taboo for Lily. Mother Superior only allowed her to embroil, but Lily could barely manage even those and often received a scolding. The embroidery was of a unicorn with eight legs. Lily loved the unusual embroidery more than anything, but she didn't know who had made it. When asked about it, Mother Superior was even more vexed than usual. The animal motifs were tab Mother Superior, but Lily could barely... The animal motifs, mother said, but Lily. Hmm? W what? Do we know each other? Uh huh. You want to hear the clues again. I like that, because I do too. As everyone knows, each different food creates exactly one emotion and promotes one characteristic. For example, I was never sad if I'd packed a few apples, because they always helped me be very strong.
Hmm? W what Do we know each other? Uh-huh. You want to hear the... I like that. Because I do, too. As everyone knows, each different food creates exactly one emotion and promotes one characteristic. For example, I was... Oh, wait. Wasn't I just about to tell you something? Fortunately, I created a memory aid just for this anecdote. Ah, exactly. Now I remember. On that day, I was particularly... angry. We had just laid the stone slabs in the chapel when the Templar Knights returned from a secret meeting. They examined my work and praised me for doing a heroic job. Then they gave me a coconut. It was one of the greatest days of my life. Here, I even still have the book in which I wrote everything down, including the meaning of the secret Templar symbols on the stone slabs. And now please leave me alone. All this reminds me too much of how I once helped a little girl uncover the mystery of the secret crypt below the chapel. One day I really have to tell you that story. <laughs> The book contained the recorded memories of the elders. Most of it was faded. Only the chapter on the construction of the convent chapel was still legible. That would certainly interest Frank. What's the matter now? My goodness, that does look very interesting. Uh-huh. Let's see. Hmm, at least those are the same symbols as on the stone slabs, but the pattern is full of gaps. I'm a pro when it comes to riddles. That's why all I need is a single glance to be able to declare without a doubt that, yes, this is a riddle. But the solutions page seems to be missing. This book is useless to me like that. Unless, of course, you have the solution. First, complete the symbols on the empty floor slabs. Wow. Yes! Yes! That has to be it! I have solved the mystery! Thanks for holding the book all this time. You're blocking the way. May I? As soon as Frank stopped drilling, Lily was finally able to draw Garrett out of his shell. Lily crouched inside the confession booth and waited. All was quiet in the chapel, except for Frank, who could barely contain his excitement. Wow! If these bones aren't evidence of a church conspiracy, I'll eat Tom Hanks' double chin! And what's that? Hey! This just keeps going! Let me just drill through this stone slab and... But that's... a sword! A real Templar sword? It's incredible! Man, it sure is wedged in tightly. I hope that isn't a load-bearing strut beam. The impact echoed through the entire church. Lily was tempted to look, but then she heard approaching steps. It's so blissfully quiet. I can finally take up my listening post again. Lily was always happy when something was left over. 
but usually it was only breadcrumbs and bones and things like that. Hey, what's going on? Is that you, Lily? Do you think that's funny? Let me out, now! Lily felt uncomfortable about it. Locking someone into a confession booth was probably not appropriate for a well-behaved girl. On the other hand, she was doing Edna a big favor. She could hardly wait to tell her best friend all about it. So, Garrett is out of the picture. Very good, but I'm still in danger. Before I can leave the convent, you have to help me cover my tracks. The doctor can't find out that I was ever here. Could you do that for me? Uh-huh. Great. Let's see. First, you have to get rid of the balloon that I left in the main hall. It even has my portrait on it. The doctor would recognize me immediately. I also played with firecrackers down by the school clock. Let's just say it was part of a weather experiment. And I would have succeeded if I'd had a real DeLorean. You can't imagine how hard it is to get a lawnmower up to 80 miles per hour. And of course, you have to remove the inscription on the swing tree. It hurts me just as much as you. But I could hardly leave the doctor better evidence that I was here than that. Do you think you can handle all that? Uh-huh. Thank you, Lily. You're the best. Lily had always thought Shy was very pretty, much prettier than herself. But cutting off a girl's hair while she was sleeping so that you could use it to make yourself a wig just wasn't right. That's why Lily returned each night to her bunk without actually doing anything. Um, oh, hello Lily. I was just thinking of Riot Girl. Riot Girl is totally cool because Riot Girl wears Shibuya clothes. Don't you think that's totally fascinating? <sighs> Suka also thinks that Riot Girl is totally cool and Suka likes Shibuya too. Shibuya is totally cool. Don't you think so too? Um, yeah, it certainly makes you think. I think way too much about things like that. My brain is getting all fuzzy. But Riot Girl is cool, right? Riot Girl, Shibuya, it's all so cool. All too much for my mind to comprehend. The chandelier was dangling out of reach on a chain, going all the way to the tower. This always made the children want to swing from it without ever being able to. <sighs> Lily wasn't able to loosen the screw with her bare hands. She needed a different tool. The chandelier's chain was attached by just one screw. Maybe this was a way to get to Edna's balloon. Lily was delighted. She'd never seen a living clown up close before. Only the dead one that appeared at her window at night. You? No, oh, another one of them. Get lost. I'm not in the mood for jokes today. Um... You're probably wondering what I'm doing here, right? My name is Ernest. Funny Ernest. <laughs> and I applied as a child therapist here. But no, Mother Superior had already found someone else. That Dr. Marcel. A nuthouse shrink. Can you believe it? I wouldn't let that guy anywhere near my kids, even if I knew where they were. <sighs> That's what I get for retraining as a psychologist. Laughter is the best therapy. Great idea. I've been waiting for a gig for months. I should have stayed a plumber. 
Um. What? No. Oh. You want to see a few tricks, don't you? I knew I shouldn't have said that. Okay. I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a cute balloon animal, and you leave me in peace, okay? Uh-huh. All right. What's it gonna be? Ew. A wrench? Why not? I know all about wrenches. A hypercube? I don't do them anymore. They always make me dislocate my shoulder. Yay! The human genome? Very funny. It hasn't even been decrypted yet. Huh. Okay, a pterodactyl then. Always the same thing. But it's only one balloon a child. Oh. Oh. A poodle. The classic. Whoa! A giraffe, then. How original. But it's only one balloon a child. Oh. Whoa! A giraffe, then. How original. Um. What's wrong? It's a short neck giraffe. Okay, a pterodactyl then, but it's only one. Oh. Huh. Okay, a pterodactyl then. Always the same thing. Um. Ah, you think they look different to this? Then show me a photo. Ew. A wrench, but it's only. Oh. Ew. A wrench? Why not? I know all about wrenches. You? Why are you staring at my cigarettes like that? They're not for sensitive children like you. Got it. Hmm. Just don't ask me about Dr. Marcel. I wouldn't let that guy anywhere near my kids, even if I knew where they were. He's a bitter, evil man. He's known everywhere for hating children. Ever since a little girl shoved him down the stairs. Huh, serves him right. That old twit. Um. I used to be a plumber. Now I plumb people's souls. What's so hard to understand? I... Okay, okay. I know th you want another balloon. Right? Uh-huh. But it's only one balloon. Oh. A well. What? You don't like the mood I'm in? You want me to show you a few tricks now or what? I feel terrible. Because my therapy concept flopped. Laughter is the best therapy. Great idea. How rotten. What Lily now did was actually void of all logic, and she could already hear uproar of the online reviewer, but she did it anyway. <laughs> the online reviewer sounded a bit hoarse today. Maybe they shouldn't smoke so much. The clown had just left his cigarettes here. He must have been in a great hurry. Lily thought Edna's self-portrait was very well done. She would have given her right arm to draw like that. Unfortunately, she wasn't strong enough to get through the bone. Done. Now only two pieces of evidence were left to completely erase Edna's tracks.